Welcome back everyone. We have another repair video of my piano that keeps on having problems. This time... We got a bad A flat or G sharp, however you want to put it. It comes up a little bit, but then it doesn't uh, sometimes. And if you've seen my other video where I repaired the DC power for this thing, uh, when I opened it up it looked pretty dang dirty, so today we're going to open this one up again and kind of clean it out and see if we can get that key working. So I'm not 100% sure what to do, but there are these eight screws along here that I'm going to remove first, and let's see if that can get us anywhere. There are also these two side panels with uh, screws here and here. And so I don't think I need to remove any other ones on this side and the other side that I'm going to go ahead and remove. So yeah, just to reiterate here, we have to remove both sides of the keyboard. On this side, be mindful of the electronics that are in it. And it's got the DC power, it's got the headphone jacks, it has MIDI ports. Now that we got this part off, we got some other screws here, here, and here that we have to take out. Uh, so when you pull it, make sure that, you know, you don't yank out any of the electronics. Uh, they're pretty simple to put back. You don't need to label them or anything. And if you've seen my other video on uh, replacing this little piece here to take this thing out, you kind of kind of have to pull it forward a little bit from the bottom, and it needs to kind of slide down. Go. Just be careful. We got the electronics covered here. You can see how dirty it is inside. So yeah, uh, we're just gonna unplug these electronics here. All right. So yeah, this is the piece that we're gonna need to to get removed. And you can kind of see it's already a little loose. I just gotta remove it off the other side. I think we should be good. We're going to clean out all of the inside. You can kind of see how dirty it is. This other side doesn't have an ele any electronics, so you don't need to worry as much about uh, pulling it. Just make sure you don't break any of the plastic. See, it's got another slit here, so I assume it's kind of, it's kind of the same thing. Pull it out from the bottom a little bit. You can hear crumbs and stuff falling out from it already. Just kind of slide it down. Ooh, look at that. Alright, so we got our work cut out here. Alright, we got a bunch more screws. We got to put one screw on the bottom. There's this bottom panel here that we have to remove. There are quite a, a bit of screws on this panel here, so make sure you collect them all and don't lose them. But they're all pretty much the same screws, so you don't need to really distinguish them apart. The only ones that are different are the ones on the side panels, and they're two big bolts and then smaller silver screws. If you can see this here already, I had some uh, keys that were kind of stuck out, so hope oops, that were kind of stuck out but hopefully after we flip this back side we'll be able to get everything working properly. Here are these screws in here we gotta remove next. So those uh, metal pieces that are going up and down the keyboard there those are the hammers essentially so it's what is able to mimic that you know real piano feel of hammers and, and action and everything. And they're weighted uh, so when it flips the other side they're gonna pull the keys some of these screws you have to maneuver those hammers a little bit out of the way in order to get them I don't have a magnetic screwdriver so you know you got to get your fingers in there when pulling out the uh, top panel 
Uh, the trick is to kind of slide it upward because uh, it rests in another little slit. And be careful because there are also electronics hooked up to it. So just be careful you don't yank any of them out. Be careful when pulling it out. Yeah, you can already kind of see how dirty it is in here. I guess the first thing I'm just going to do is kind of just try to wipe all this away. So I don't go any too crazy on my cleaning. I'm kind of wiping everything away right now. I get a napkin. I moisten it up a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to get any water on any of the electronics just to get this part a little neater, just to get away some of this dirt, grime, and cat hair. The next part is to remove the key so that we can see the electronics underneath it. It's relatively simple. Uh, so in the back, so they're hooked in two places, one at the back and then one at the bottom in the front that connects to the hammers. You can kind of see that the keys have a little slit inside of it at the bottom there, and that's kind of where the hammers attach. And all you really have to do is pull the white keys a little forward and you, you should be able to slide out uh, from the other hammers. The black keys are a little trickier. Uh, I had to maneuver some of the hammers underneath. It's pretty much the same method of pulling it forward to get it off that hammer, but some, some of the time I had to uh, get underneath it and kind of get the hammers at the right angle so that the black keys would release. Looking back, I don't actually think I needed to do white keys first and then black keys. I think you could have just done them all at the same time. You can kind of see that I do have some of these other keys up at the front here that don't look like they're sitting right. They had kind of popped off of another lever. Uh, I didn't get a recording of this, but you just kind of had to pop them back into place. You can see how much uh, dirt has collected in here. I've had this piano for about 14 years. I've never really cleaned it or done anything like this to it before, so it was definitely due for maintenance. A lot of things have collected over the years. Uh, I noticed that there were some even that looked like spilled beverages. The first thing I'm using is some compressed air. Uh, this is comp compressed air that I've used for electronics for cleaning out computers before just because it doesn't leave behind moisture. And the next thing I'm doing is just taking a, another damp napkin or paper towel. Try not to, to make it too wet and I'm not, not trying to actually touch any of the electrical components. There is a lot of uh, lubricant also on the keys so that you can have a nice smooth action. Be careful not to wipe any of it away. In my situation it was uh, a white liquid or a white substance that was on the keys and on the hammers and on the action. So be careful not to wipe any of it away. It did collect a lot of the dirt and cat hair to it, so I wasn't able to get everything off. These rubber buttons that you see here on this uh, electronic board, that I think is what also helps determine how well it's able to gauge its pressure sensors. And when you get up close, you can kind of see some of them are labeled, so you, you can know if uh, one of the keys isn't working. Make sure you don't dampen the rag or towel too much, otherwise you might damage the electronics. If you do get some moisture on it, be sure not to turn it on until you're sure that there's no moisture on the electronics. All right, I've pretty much put everything back. I put the keys down, I screwed everything back up, closed everything back up, just follow the, the steps that I did before in reverse, and let's give this a shot. All right, seems to be a lot better. I really have no idea what I'm doing about anything, but if I can do it, you can do it too.